visitors came to Urbana for a business trip, a football game, or to visit relatives, at the end of the day, they needed a place to stay. In the 1850s, on the 8th Judicial Circuit, a wandering entourage of judge and lawyers needed rooms during those weeks in May and October when the court convened in Urbana. In the city's early years, though, you never knew what to expect. Lawyer Henry Clay Whitney described one stay at an Urbana hotel. At Judge Davis's request, I secured a room for him, also for Lincoln, and myself at the American House, a primitive hostelry. The building had three front entrances from the street, but not a single hall downstairs. Close by the front and dining room doors hung a gong, which our vulgar Boniface, standing in the doorway immediately beneath our windows, was in the habit of beating vigorously as a prelude to our meals. It was frequently very annoying, and so often disturbed our slumbers in the early dawn that we decided one morning it must be removed or forever silenced. By a majority vote, Lincoln was chosen to carry out the decree. That afternoon, the innkeeper found it missing and scoured the hotel. Whitney guessed that his friend was the culprit, and returning to his room found Lincoln looking amused, sheepish, and guilty. With his friend standing guard at the door, Lincoln returned it to its rightful place. The truth is, wrote Whitney, we all enjoyed the landlord's discomfiture. Travelers had higher expectations for accommodations after the Civil War, as expanding rail lines and then roads brought more and more salesmen, business executives, and tourists to Urbana. By the 20th century, Urbana civic leaders decided that the city needed a new hotel, especially after Champaign opened its Inman Hotel in 1915 and began to draw convention business. In 1921, 100 local businessmen organized the Urbana Hotel Company as a public stock company to build a new and modern hotel sufficient to meet the needs of our growing community. Once a site was selected after considerable jockeying among eight potential locations, the Urbana Hotel Company hired architect Joseph Royer to design the building. His initial plans were rejected as bordering on the commonplace, the board said and they wanted a building distinctive in its style that would attract and hold favorable attention of any passerby. Royer went back to the drawing boards and came back with a striking five-story English Tudor-style structure with distinctive steeply pitched roof lines and exposed cross timbers. Construction, delayed by a work stoppage, tumbled into a mad rush as fall approached. The Illinois Municipal League booked the hotel for its annual convention on November 1, 1923, just before homecoming weekend at the university, with the Illini and Red Grange playing in Memorial Stadium for the first time. Not all work will be completed, the News Gazette reported on October 28, 1923. More than 100 cots have been purchased for the homecoming overflow crowd. Three months later, the five-story, 104-room Urbana Lincoln Hotel was dedicated with a dinner dance. Alvin Burroughs, publisher of the Urbana Daily Courier and president of the hotel company, told the audience, the Urbana Lincoln Hotel is a community enterprise. The hotel in the first place was not built as an investment, but it was expected to be a monument to the community and to its betterment. Burroughs was right. It was not always a good investment, at least during the Depression, when the company declared bankruptcy and went through reorganization. During the 1950s and 60s in private ownership, the Urbana Lincoln did well, winning several awards for its lodging and restaurant. The hotel was sold in 1965 to Carson Peary Scott and & Company, and it became an integral part of the Lincoln Square Shopping Center, later being part of the Jumers Castle Lodge chain. It remains a distinctive landmark in downtown Urbana.